<laughs> Hello, one and all. This is the Peace Dealer, and uh, this is the first episode of Peace Talk, which is a pretty neat interview series where I meet with some fantastic individuals and uh, talk crap to them, or talk with them, talk about them, find out some interesting things, spread peace. And uh, to kick off this first episode, I'm lucky enough to have Alyssa Sharp join us. Alyssa, how are you doing this I'm, fine uh, day? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great right now in this empty room, feeling at peace. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to feel too. I'm feeling a little bit nervous right now. I'm not going to lie. I just got nervous. <laughs> the butterflies just yeah. touch you real quick. I'm kind of like rocking my seat back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear you're moving right now, and you're in the middle of a very hectic move. How is that? Oh, yeah, it's, it's fun now. We just finished moving. I just spent two days cleaning my apartment to try to get my security deposit back. So it's all finally over. I'm probably not going to get my security deposit back, but I'm just glad to be done. <laughs> Dang, you know it's hardcore when you don't even care about the security deposit. It's just like, ah. Well, I guess I did for two days, and then I was like, if they're going to just screw me out of this, then if they're going to screw me out of it, I have to let it go. So I'm working on that, you know, keeping myself level or something. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. And where where are you, actually? Like, what city? Well, I am south of Austin. I'm actually in a little town right now uh, called Buda. It's B-U-D-A. It looks like Buda, kind of. Anyway, it's like right south of Austin, so I moved from north of Austin to like directly underneath Austin. Because so you represent uh, Texas. Uh -huh. That's where the action is. Yeah, uh, and I'm I'm not from Texas though, obviously. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Chicago, or like the suburbs of Chicago. Okay, the Windy City. Yeah. Where, where, where? That's just up. Yeah, it took, a, it took a move to Texas for me to get really, really lonely and get addicted to the internet and make YouTube videos. So nice. Yeah. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with getting addicted to the internet. I mean, I know, I know. Now that I'm on the internet, I meet so many people who are also addicted to the internet, and we just have addicted to the internet friendships, and that's yes. <laughs> It's almost like a new age for real, this uh, new Aquarian energy of creating networks electronically and whatnot. Yeah, I know. Like, technically, now you're, like, my best friend, so. Yeah. We'll hang out for tea sometime. <laughs> talks. We'll have a special episode. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be silly. No, that's just okay. So the wonderful thing about Alyssa is she as you've heard, makes astrology videos, even numerology videos as well. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, if I'm right, you started making them a year ago, correct? Um, actually, it's almost two years ago. Almost two years ago. Yeah, at the end of May. I wish that I could say it was a year ago because that would mean I was a lot cooler, but, <laughs> you know, rise to the top. Just kidding. Started from the bottom, now we're here. It only took a year. No, I, I was two years ago. Almost. So that's like 2012 then, right? Yeah, it was like, yeah, May 2012, I put out my first video on something stupid. And then, like, two weeks later, I put out, like, why I, what I hate about Virgos. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Yeah. So what you hate about the science here. And then the world ended, like, around December, and then yeah. somehow survived and kept making videos. Yeah. That's right, yeah, the world ended. I got pregnant. Life was horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> everything I knew was done. What was that? Uranus was opposite my son, just making everything in my life different for two years. That's over now. Um, uh -huh. that, so two years ago it was opposite your son, though. Yeah, it, it was started in actually like June two years ago, and then it ended in February. So now I feel more relaxed. Nice, nice. But, yeah, that was a pretty crazy time. <clears throat> it was weird. 
I didn't know That's... what happened at the time, actually. <laughs> Oh, so it's like in retrospect, you like yeah. when you found out, you're like, whoa, no wonder. Yeah, I, like, I don't look at transits because I'm like crazy about transits. If I look at them, I just start spending so much time that like trying to figure out what these transits mean and how trying to use them, and like so I just try not to look at them. It's like, oh wow, five hours just passed. Yeah. That really happens. Yeah, exactly. Like, Ooh, what's gonna happen in my life? And then you start scaring yourself because. Oh, you're like, yeah. <laughs> I remember last time when Uranus was opposite my Mercury. Now it's opposite my Sun. My life is gonna end, and then you just you know, don't do anything. And <laughs> it says you don't want to get married when Uranus is opposite your Sun. And you don't. I got married. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They say you could regret it because you're not thinking properly. But I also had. This is like where I go crazy because I also had Saturn. My progressed Saturn is in my seventh house, and I had Saturn transiting my seventh house at the same time. So Wow. That kind of like set you up for it then. Yeah, I was pretty much pulled in the direction. And <coughs> now, obviously, you want to think, oh, no, love got me married. And it was like really whirlwind because we just got married out of nowhere. But the last, after we got married, I, everything made sense why we had to. Cause oh, nice. Lots of things happened in life that if we weren't married – uh, things would have gone a different way, and everything is better because of it, and I'm very happy. Wow. And, yeah, and I think they say, like, after the Uranus, like, transits over, and it, it did, because Uranus was retrograde for so long and kept bouncing around past my son. It was so annoying. Um, they say that you'll regret it afterwards, and I don't regret it, so that's really good, because I'm 100% sure that was a really good decision. But yeah, say I looked at the, the thing and they were like, oh, you're in this opposite sun, don't get married. That might have freaked me out. I yeah. Know. But I mean, that's, I really love Saturn for that. Saturn really look out, I guess, um, staying true to what the transit is for, then it's like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah, basically it was like, yeah, you're going to get married right now. Your is going to make this happen. Everything is going <laughs> to you're your thing, but it's supposed to happen, so just go with it. Whenever Uranus is transiting something, the only thing I learned from this, and that everyone should learn, is that you just got to go with it. Because if you start holding on to it and controlling things, then that's when it really messes you up, and you have to go with it. So it must have been a leap of faith. Like it, It's really assuring to hear that you saw you know, the reasons after, but like in the moment, it must have been like really hectic for you, huh? Yeah. And yeah, no, well, it was, like, exciting, but we just, I'm glad, it, everyone was really mad at me, because my sister got married that summer, and my um, best friend did, and they had been engaged for two years, and they had already had their wedding date set, and then I went and I just got married, like, right before them, and they all thought that I did it to, like, beat them or something, and I'm like, really, guys, I don't really care about weddings that much, and I had, like... Ten people there. We just got married really quickly. I bought a pretty cheap dress and just did it. And I'm really glad. We just we just thought about it. We're like we could spend thousands of dollars on a wedding, or we could just get married, and we did. That's nice. <laughs> That's really awesome. That's really awesome. Well, congratulations on your marriage and your new <laughs> child. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we have our child. You know, <laughs> You weren't married, Alyssa. You whore. <laughs> I'm more the age of Aquarius. So, Alyssa, why did you get married before you had your kid? That is so not Kimmy. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> it's crazy. So, other than that, actually, I'm gonna get back to that. But um, how did you enter this world of astrology, and uh, how did people react? Because it's it's interesting we said 2012 was around the year. That was around the time, you know, a lot of us, you know, more young astrologers really started yeah. popping up on the scene. So what? how did it really affect you? What really made you realize, oh, my gosh, I need to start talking about why Virgo is horrible right now? Well, because Virgos are the worst. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. I, can't, I can't deny that. <laughs> Even if you're a Virgo, you can't deny it. Oh. <laughs> I'll be in Virgo, so whatever. Um, I I had been getting into it for like three years prior. I mean, I don't actually know. That is a false statement I just said. I don't know why I got into it. It was it was like a slow process of just kind of 
looking at shit with my best friend, and we just would talk about astrology, and we worked at a restaurant together, so we would make um, astrology jokes about it, about people that we knew. You know, like, oh, that is so Cancer Moon of you, you know. <laughs> and no one knew what we were talking about. We would just laugh, and that was fun. And I think it helped that I had a friend who was just as nerdy about it as I was, and so we would go to, like, Barnes & Noble and just read the books because they're really expensive, and we would just read them for free and talk about things and go to New Age bookstores and stuff. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so then after that, then I moved um, with my husband. He was my boyfriend at the time, and he wanted to go to Texas, and I was pretty much done with Chicago. Not done, but it was cold, and I was living there my whole life, you know. And so I thought, hey, I'd follow. I'll follow him. And uh, when I got here, I was so lonely. <laughs> like, I had no idea. It was just like this loneliness, like, took over. And I was trying to meet new people. And then after I started meeting new people, I realized that all the people I was meeting were exactly like the people I knew in Chicago. They were just in, like, Texas, which is weird. But you just find people. You can't – that's why they say you can't run away from your problems. You just find the same problems. And that's what I did. So then I decided, like, in my loneliness, I would mess with my, my Mac. You know, I'd be like, oh, just making videos. I wouldn't post them. Then I got friends. I stopped doing that. And then I got this best friend who happened to be a Virgo. And it, I remembered through my whole life, every guy I ever was in love with was a Virgo. Like, seriously. Embarrassingly so. So I had than this Virgo friend, and I realized, like, why I was in love with Virgos and, like, why I had this big connection to Virgo, and I was like, I fucking hate Virgos. They suck. And so I made this video. Sure enough, after I made the video, I showed it to my friend, and she goes, you know, Alyssa, you should redo it because it, I could think of ways that you can make this better. I was like, you are such a fucking Virgo. Didn't you see that? That's what we do. <laughs> Oh my God, that is such a very good response. I like, know. Like, it was fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and that's then, awesome. Yeah. So then people like saw it though, which was weird. But I guess you Google search stuff. Like you're like, oh, what I hate about Virgos. And people liked it, and they kept asking for me to do the rest of the signs. And it wasn't until I did like five videos before people started hating them. I didn't like realize that because when you make a hate video, I thought they were funny, and the First group of people to see them thought they were funny. And then, like, people started believing they were serious or just wanted to yell at me. I don't know exactly, but that's what happened next. <laughs> the, Cap the Capricorns took it pretty bad, did they? Yeah, Capricorns and Sagittarius is, they like murder. Oh, they were like, I, I hate you so much. And I, I felt bad because the Capricorn video, I don't even I don't remember it. Got really drunk afterwards as it was uploaded. I don't know. That doesn't even matter. I don't even know what I'm talking. I'm just rambling. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like talking to Libras because Libras could talk forever. <laughs> like, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we have to stop her. <laughs> nice air communication right here. Yeah. So, uh, actually, speaking of Libra, how do you think being a Libra like affects the way you? talk about astrology and, and have a channel? Um, well, I think it, in my opinion, and this could be said that this is wrong and that I can't, I'm not allowed to say this about myself, but I believe that I'm a Libra who understands how shitty Libras are. And so I know that we have a, being a Libra, you have a really good a perception, like you can really perceive things very well, and you know how to look at both sides of an issue. But the problem is, is that any Libra that decides to believe in an issue becomes crazy self-righteous about that issue, and they no longer even give a crap about the other side. And so they start just flinging their own bullshit or whatever, and they become super unbalanced, and that's what Libras do. But I'm like, I'm aware of it because I've seen myself do it for so long. And I am, you know, late 20s. I'm not early 20s. If I was doing this in my early 20s, I don't think I could handle it. <laughs> but 
but late 20s I can like see and I really do try to every time I'm about to talk about something because Libras talk, we can talk I really try to show a good side and a bad side to everything because I think it's important because I think there's a good side and a bad side uh, sometimes people watch the videos and then they think that I'm really just focusing on the bad side and that's fine because that's people's perception because I try to throw in good stuff too I don't just that's why I, like, I made my I hate Virgos video first. I don't hate Virgos the most, actually. We all pretty much suck. I just, <laughs> it's just the first one that clicked. So if you hate that I'm here making videos, you should hate Virgos for being in my life because they did it to me. <laughs> Can I answer your question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you gave the proper Libra perspective. <laughs> I, I feel like Libras... I really admire Libra's ability to just, like, be so well-versed with social situations. And the only thing that I, I have a love-hate relationship with is you you do it so much better than us Geminis because we want to be tricksters, but uh, Libra could, like, just make the social situation be anything. It's like their palate. They can incite riots between two groups of people and then act like they're the peacemakers making it up. It's like... <sighs> yeah, it's true. We do that shit. I am like a drama starter. It's like my own little corner. And I was like, that's good. Oh, I didn't do that. That wasn't me. Oh my god, you guys are crazy. You guys, we did that. Yeah. I, Gemini, so... They are way more versed, I think. Like, a Gemini is the air sign that understands communication and knows things and actually, like, research and knows and really, like, cares to know the truth. And I don't think a Libra gives a fuck about the truth. <laughs> I think we this is one thing to be balanced. It doesn't really matter. And then when we are unbalanced, the only truth we have is that it's what we believe. And so that's why so many Libras really suck. Like, they just suck. They're like, ah, oh, but I'm just doing my thing. This is my thing. I believe in this, and this is true, and this is right, and you can't make me move, and I'm stubborn, and blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, oh, you are so annoying. And that's like Libras. Like, most people really hate them, and they don't even know. <laughs> but, but a Gemini, like, cares to know the truth, and that's, yeah. Appreciate it. I like how Libras could uh, also, like, um, you could say one thing, but it'll mean, like, five different things to, to like, the same five different people. But, like, oh, you know, yeah. how to, like, change your inflection to really, you, like, say one thing, but it mean different things. It's pretty cool. Oh, well, thank you. That's what we pride ourselves in. I can talk to everybody. Like, I'm really cool. <laughs> <laughs> You got that Venusian charm, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And you also got the North Node. How do you feel the North Node entering your sign, like, um, really impacts you? Like, I know for me, um, I'm starting this peace talk with a Libra. Um, my my website that I have for my uh, artist, my hip hop music, was actually made by a Libra. Kind of just like karmic things that are happening and showing me, hey, pay attention to Weavers because I really have uh, goodies for you. Yeah, I do feel, and I and I only know, like, because what do I do now? I just, like, hang out by myself with my kid and my family, and I'm the only Libra, but from what I've seen, and, like, there are a couple Libras I am sort of close to, I really feel like, or maybe I, I stalk them on Facebook, I don't know, but I feel like we think it's our time. Or just like, this is our time. If we don't do something right now, we're going to miss this window of time. And I think that's what we feel right now. So if, like, Libras are popping out of the woodwork to even help you and, like, want to, it's because they're like, oh, my God, yeah, if I don't do this right now, I'm never going to get this other chance to do it. Like, I – small window opening up if I don't take it. And I expect that other people, I think, around me should be feeling the same thing, and they aren't. And so that kind of frustrates me. But it makes sense then. Like yeah. they're just oblivious to the uh, overall energy like around that? Right. Yeah. Like my sense of urgency to get something accomplished. You know, I just feel like right now I have to get these things accomplished because 
it's like if this is my career and this is what I'm doing in my life and what I'm supposed to be doing, then I have to set it in stone right now. And then in however long it takes, I don't know, I feel like it's like a year or something that I have. Like that's kind of what I see in my head. I'm like, I have a year to do this, and if I don't do it, then everything will fall apart. But that's, So I have to rise as high as I can now, and then I can remain level after that. That makes sense. I don't know. This is what I'm feeling. <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense, especially with Mars, the planet of aggression. So you really feel that pressure, like, oh, I need to get this stuff done. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's awesome. That's that's really interesting. I'm definitely keeping an eye out, cause especially with this new age of Aquarius, Libra is like, I feel so pivotal that um, Cardinal Air to really, because of with Aquarius, we can have the ideas and the the logic and info with Gemini, but it needs to go and spread and you know be created with partnerships and conversation and actual like I don't know. I feel like that's the midpoint between connecting all of this uh, knowledge and truth and yeah, yeah individuality. So. Um, this is a very important question. Um, do you, by any chance, like bacon? Is that your thing? Um, and I could like take bacon or leave it. So I am not somebody who they make memes about. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> bacon memes. So yeah. you're 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 pretty indifferent, actually. Then. Yeah, like, I'll eat it. Normally when I go to a restaurant and say, like, the Cracker Barrel or something that's, like, really hoity-toity, I get sausage because when I was a kid, I did not like bacon, and I think it was a grease. And now I'm, like, some days I'll be like, oh, man, I really want some bacon. But then sometimes I'm just, like, I don't care. So, yeah, I am not amusing in that bacon department. (laughs) Mm. I have turkey bacon in my fridge right now. Yeah. Oh, nice. That is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, I wonder what, what was that? <laughs> Bacon yeah. gods are pleased right now. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like turkeys have less feelings than pigs do. No, I don't know. That's not <laughs> I do have a weird thing with animals that <laughs> hit its climax when I was pregnant, and I, like, watched... I was pregnant, and I watched some video on how they treat cows and pigs, and I couldn't even walk through the meat department without crying. Oh yeah, just like, yeah, pregnant shit. And and they're not really nice to pigs or cows. Like, cows have feelings, and, like, these little pigs. And anyway, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Watch the turkey supporters get mad. What? No. They're not as important as pigs, Alyssa? What is wrong with you? <laughs> they just can't be. I just can't imagine that a turkey can be as important as a pig. But it's how I feel. And some people feel like you can eat dogs. And I just don't understand that, but I don't understand it. So that's as far as we're going to get with that. <laughs> true, true. Um, well, leaving, uh, I mean, uh, Borrowing from eating dogs. Actually, this has nothing to do with eating dogs, but <laughs> I don't want to talk. <laughs> Let, let's play. Before we finish the interview, let's play a quick game uh, called "Would You Rather," and uh, we'll keep it a uh, pretty astro themed. And uh, yeah, we'll take a. We'll, we'll do three rounds, and uh, we'll start with uh, you. As far as would you rather? Lie to a Scorpio and get caught, or fight with an Aries. Oh, I would much rather fight with an Aries because you can like party with an Aries for five hours, get absolutely nowhere, but at the end you feel good because you know that if anyone witnessed it, that they really don't respect the Aries anymore. <laughs> because, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> yeah, my husband's a Scorpio, and so is my sister, and I live with them both. And if, every time, like, if I lie, I tell them that I did, like, right away. I'm like, I just lied. I'm really sorry. Please don't hurt me. I'm gonna go into the room and let you think about this for a, a little while. 
you want to talk about it later, I'm open. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I would rather like fight with an Aries and just deal with it because getting on the Scorpio's bad side is like that moment when they know that you lied and it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not good. They lose respect and yeah, that's not good. So do I ask you one now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, man, if you were a girl, I'd have like really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather? Oh, I should have been thinking of these. Okay, right, would would you rather talk to a Taurus about astrology, and they don't believe in astrology, oh, God. and have to maintain a conversation for an hour, or would you rather <laughs> go to a party? Um with a Leo, where you're the guest of honor. <laughs> oh, interesting. Damn, that's a hard one. Because, um, I mean, at first glance, you wouldn't really think, oh, of course going to a party with a Leo is better than talking to a Taurus. But, uh, I mean, if I'm the guest of honor, then I, just, I just feel like I'm Leo's enemy, like, all of a sudden. But, uh, yeah, it's funny that you asked that, because yesterday I was leaving from the metro, and um, the moon was 22 degrees Taurus, and uh, I saw someone randomly, I just felt like asking her if she was into astrology, and... She was like, the first thing she said was, no, I don't really believe in it that much. I think the whole conversation was like less than three minutes, and she was a Taurus, too. Like, I asked her if she was a Virgo or a Libra. She's like, no, I'm a Taurus. And I don't know. It's like the, the general air just dried up real quick. Like, I don't understand how I could do it for an hour because I, I couldn't even last, like, four minutes. It's crazy. I know. I think I got you in a... Like, you're going to be annoyed all night with the Leo or um, something that's impossible. So I'm sorry about that. Talking to a Taurus about something they don't believe in for an hour yeah. could never happen. <laughs> Especially if they're super dogmatic about it, too. Then it's like, oh, gosh, like, now I have to hear why I'm wrong for talking about this. Uh, I, I, would, I would have to go to the party with the Leo because I think since I'm a Gemini, it would still kind of work out somehow where I could just, like, get, get the Leo all the attention anyway. Actually, I'm sure the Leo will end up with all the attention anyway. No, but. I know. So you have to, if you go in with the Leo, you have to go in knowing that even though this is your party, you can't act like it's your party because you'll be disappointed. And then you'll be like, listen, look at me. Thank you for coming for me. Check out my friend. I'm going to go in the back and get drunk by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, like, say a, a five-minute long speech about your friend and you're like, wait, I thought, I thought the party yeah. was about you. Well, yeah. <laughs> you would know if you know astrology. That's not about me. <laughs> so, would you would you rather make a reality show with the Pisces or would you rather be in a popular talk show with an Aquarius? Oh, definitely make a reality show with the Pisces, because that would be, like, really good TV. A talk show with an Aquarius, I'd rather blow my brains out. <laughs> like with Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They talk, what is Ellen known for? Talking over you while you're talking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And I shouldn't have said that blow my brains out thing. That was a very metaphorical thing, and I'm really sorry for anybody who's touched deeply by blowing their brains out. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I say stuff like that, and then I get in trouble, and I feel bad. Look at me. I don't know what's in the air right now. I'm feeling bad about what I say. <laughs> I'm I'm jealous of you because I'll be completely oblivious to that. Like I wouldn't even realize. I probably said something offensive, like after the fact. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> I think I'm really. Weird. I there's some words that I definitely should have edited out of some of my older videos. Maybe we could do like a scavenger hunt one day and find these awful <laughs> words that I just decided to throw out there. Only if we can like collage it into one video. 
<laughs> Where it's Alyssa shouldn't have said. <laughs> yeah. Alyssa was an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would you would you rather do the Pisces reality thing? Um that's actually a tough one. I would love to do a talk show with an Aquarius. You probably but, uh, yeah, that's a really tough one. Yeah, because, um, I, I mean, I have, like, that Pisces Midheaven going on as a Gemini, but my Midheaven's actually Aquarius, so it's like oh, yeah. I would rather do, like, I would really, like, generally feel good doing I guess the talk show, only because um, I feel like I'd have more to offer than to do a reality show. I feel like I'd probably get in the Pisces way. Because they'd be doing everything, and then I'd just be, like, saying one or two words here and there. Yeah, actually, I was just thinking, being a Gemini, you could really do well in on a talk show with an Aquarius. Like, I don't think a Libra can, because we get... I dated an Aquarius one time, and I just felt like everything that I said, he was mad at me for saying, because he, he wanted to be like, you, why do you think you, you're so smart? Like, I just feel like Libras offend Aquarians just by talking, and so... I would want nothing to do with that. Though a Gemini can talk, and Aquarians, they love each other. I don't know why. You guys just love each other, and I don't get it. But Libra is talking about, you know, causing drama and sitting in the corner. Pisces are like, you know, they're just like this ball of fire that a Libra gets to manipulate and, like, send into the world. I would have oh. so much fun. I didn't, I didn't have a... I never really thought about that kind of combo with Pisces and Libra. So, like... I, I know um, Pisces, Libra is Pisces' eighth house, so that does make sense, yeah. yeah. It yeah. must be. Uh, I like that analogy of putty I use. Yeah, and not saying you Pisces that I mean, to, like, that I could just, but that's what we do. Like, you're a Pisces, and just kind of, like, watch it happen. Though, so, I've definitely, like, had screaming matches with Pisces before, but I think that's because I have a Pisces ascendant. It, just, it gets a little bit crazy up in her, and then I get a little bit crazy, and then it just, you can't calm the Pisces down, and therefore, like, if I can't calm myself down, it's war, which can happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Angry yeah. Libras are very funny. Yeah. Oh, then this is, here, I'll ask you something. What? Oh, wait, I have one inside of it. I have to talk this out while I'm saying it. No, I don't. I get so nervous when I'm on the side. Would you rather um, Sorry, I'm almost some dead air. This is like what you'd be kicking off the radio show for. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> would, you rather, would you rather spend your whole life competing? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah. Would you rather spend your whole life competing and a workplace arena with Capricorns only for the rest of your life, or would you rather have to raise uh, four children with a Libra that decided she doesn't love you anymore? And oh my god! Oh my god! That's really tough. <laughs> I'd have to, damn, like, I would not have fun doing the Capricorn thing, but I have to choose that, because Libra, who doesn't love you anymore, and you're raising kids with her, I guess it depends if she really just either stayed attached or just, like, give you hell for it. I would say that she got custody of the kids and decided to make your life a living hell with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh hell no! I can't. I can't deal with. Because yeah. a Libra can't make your life a living hell, uh, to the point where you can't like go out anywhere because they turn everyone against you. It's yeah. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, Libras are really good at that, and some of them because they're the only inanimate object in the zodiac don't understand that their kids have feelings either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, like a lot of people are like, yeah, my mother was a Libra. She, you know, she's all right. I love her, but... <laughs> she's all right. <laughs> oh, my God. That's That's a she, yeah. She doesn't like anybody and was really self-righteous, yeah. I, I picked the Capricorn thing, too. <laughs> At least I'll get a good work ethic 
Well, yeah. not good worth it, but at least I'll learn some. Yeah, you might be under everybody's thumb your entire life, but I guess it'd be ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather um, go on a wild ride and um, rob, like rob banks and never get caught? You know, exhilarating um, action. With, with a band of Sagittarians or start a mafia with a Capricorn? Oh. I don't know. You never get caught running away. They could run away my whole life or be stuck in one place my whole life, never able to run away. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I see that. I would run away with the Sagittarians. It'd be more of a rush. It'd be a lot of change, but I can handle chaos. Traveling around the world with these archers. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, because definitely you don't want to leave the, the mafia. <laughs> Whatever. Do, it, do I have to do one more? Okay. Yep, yep. Let's see. I'll just use a sign that we haven't used yet, right? Because we've almost done... Can't... Oh, okay. Would you rather have to spend every night for a month watching a sappy romantic comedy with a cancer or spend every night, every month, or every one month uh, <laughs> watching the same sappy movies with a Virgo? Oh. This makes sense. We can elaborate. This is what the, I imagine you can go on. The cancer would be for like seven days? No, no. You have to do it for a month. It would be a month either way. With You have to enjoy these romantic, sappy comedies with the cancer and watch them cry. Or you have to watch these movies with a Virgo who sits there being annoyed watching these videos every night for a month after you get off work. <laughs> I think I think I'd actually be better off with the Virgo cuz yeah the, the Virgo would like completely like complain about most parts but I'd probably be complaining with her like oh how is this possible or how is that possible and like we just take turns picking it apart and talking completely negative about it <laughs> only cuz I can't I can't cry with the cancer like this is never going to happen <laughs> <laughs> what are you feeling right now? What is this thing called emotion that you're crying for? <laughs> That's funny. I would pick the cancer because I think that would be fun. Like somebody who just wanted to watch The Notebook with me. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That was so much fun. We can watch that one movie. Oh, The Vow. Have you seen The Vow? Oh my god. It just breaks your heart. Just what the it. hell? I've never heard of it. Well, that with Channing Tatum, like, oh my gosh. Talk about, oh, if that happened, life, oh my gosh, so sad and beautiful and just, it's real. It's like a true story. I don't, it's like <laughs> oh my God. Oh, That's so funny. Enough. I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> so, um, that was fun, by the way. Um, what? Yeah. Barring on uh, favorites and non-favorites, what are your three favorite signs and what are your three least favorite signs that you just would rather do without? I, don't want to ask <laughs> I like. I think it changes because yeah. like who's in your life, you know, and who's really affecting you. Because every sign has the has the choice to be absolutely horrible and. When they act out on their horridness, like, you know, there's a serial killer from every sign. <laughs> How they kill is different. I mean, I'm sure most people would rather be killed by uh, Ted Bundy, the Sagittarius, than John Wayne Gacy, the Pisces. So <laughs> uh, I think, think if I had to choose, we'll do the least, the worst first, that I don't like being around they just annoy the crap out of me. It would be Aquarius, Virgo, and Capricorn. And now that I said that, and like 
it could change, but like right now I'm just thinking because if it's Aquarius, Virgo, or Capricorn, none of them would ever allow me to say the weird things I want to say. I feel like those three signs don't allow people to be weird. And as much as Aquarius is like, I'm the weird sign, I'm the original, they are the original. Nobody else is. And so you start saying something where you're like, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. The Virgo analyzes too much and like doesn't like that and likes to be so normal. They surround themselves with normalcy and I can't be around that. And then Capricorns, you know, they, they have other things to do, not hang out with me. And therefore, all three of them, those signs, I just feel like they're dishonest. They and I don't like that. I want them to be honest. So my favorite, like the best signs in my opinion, which this doesn't mean anything about people. Uh, Sagittarius and uh, Cancer and Taurus. And now I have to back that up. <laughs> Sagittarius, because they're they are really the most open minded. Granted, they can take a thought and run with it, but they're the ones who aren't going to judge you for being weird. Cancers, they are moody, but they're funny. And they're so funny. <laughs> and they just, because they don't want to deal with emotions, so they just act out in humor. And they're super moody, but I feel like most of them are really self-aware. And then Taurus, because Taurus is really stubborn, and they don't want to talk about things that they don't want to talk about. But every Taurus I've ever met is very accepting of things and that fall in their box. And so as long as I fall in a Taurus's box, it's okay. So I guess I'm relating these all to how I would relate to them. But Taurus, Cancer, and Sagittarius, they allow people to be weird. Like if a Taurus doesn't want to deal with your weirdness, a Taurus isn't going to make fun of you for it. A Taurus is just going to be like, yeah, what the fuck, whatever, and like walk away. Same with like a Cancer and a Sagittarius. So that's, that's really interesting. I didn't I, expect you to say cancer. That's really interesting. Well, yeah. every, every cancer I've met, I mean, they're funny. I don't know. You can just spend so much time with a kid. Maybe you don't want to marry one. <laughs> like, that would be a fun game. Who <laughs> like, is it? Fuck, marry, kill. <laughs> that game. Uh, I'd spend time with a cancer. I wouldn't marry one. But that you know, would be fun. And I'd watch sappy movies with them, too, so that's good. <laughs> Nice, nice. So, uh, as a... Your Pluto's in Scorpio, right? I forget. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> as a... Uh, what, do you, what do you think of the Pluto in Scorpio generation, and what do you think is really, like, next for us? Like, what, what are we going to evolve through? We have the North Node go through the signs, so it's like we probably have our subtle mission to carry out? Yeah. I Whenever I think about uh, Pluto and Scorpio, I'm just looking at something. Um, I think, okay, because when I think about Pluto, it obviously like rules Scorpio, so it's in its home, but I think that Pluto represents so much control, more so than, say, Scorpio, which is so dangerous and chaotic. And so I think that we really, like, we all want to control a certain amount of danger <laughs> in chaos. And so if you're looking at like what we're in the internet age right now, and I say this sometimes, and I don't know if I've ever said it on the video, but like what Jay-Z said. Jay-Z said that the internet is like the wild, wild west right now. Like it is crazy. It is chaotic. And I think that what we can do, because we're not, the generation after us, is going to be immersed in this internet culture, and they're just going to ride with it because they know it. But the people older than us are fucking afraid of it, <laughs> and they don't want to deal with it, and they don't want to have anything to do with it, and they'll be like, oh, I have a Facebook. I'm going to post likes of pictures, but I'm going to like stay away from other things because it's just really scary, and I don't get it. It's too much time. But like, what we want to do is we're like, okay, let's take this internet, and let's make this ours. And so... I feel like there's a lot of like this controlled chaos that we all have, that we just enjoy it. We're like, okay, 
it is gets a little bit scary sometimes. It gets a little bit dangerous, but there's a part of us that just feels like we have this is our responsibility to make this okay so that the future generations have something stable from what's going on right now. Because right now, none, none of this is stable. I mean, you know, anything can be thrown up on the internet. People see the weirdest shit nowadays. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I'm feeling. I agree. I, f- I really do feel like we're we're kind of like almost set up to, you know, move first and, and be those forerunners, even though it's really hard to understand what the hell we are doing. But uh, I really do resonate with that, like setting up the future generations a lot too. No, and Pluto and Sagittarius especially and all yeah. these new people being born now. It would be interesting to see how um, our, our views on sex culture change too. And yeah. speaking out more about rape and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's being Sagittarius, like everything that they, is everything going to be so much more open-minded and open? It's going to be a very interesting thing. Mm. Like, I don't know. I don't even know how to deal with them right now. But what's the difference for subjects are different there. So being that we're in new times, what is it what is it being a wife like and a mother too, especially a mother who knows astrology? So how are you gonna be raising your child in the Jedi ways of the planets? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something that is really important to me, and that is that I my husband forced it because there's a point when you're pregnant and you know about astrology that you want to dictate that child's chart. You're, you get this point, you're like, well, I can choose when this kid's going to be born. Now, uh, when, when it comes time to, like, you know, give birth and, and the doctor's like, okay, we have to induce labor or schedule a C-section, it's so easy to just say, yeah, let me go look at the charts first and, like, figure this out because I want to have, like, this perfect baby. Well, I mean, you can't do that. You just can't. Like, the universe doesn't allow it. And if you do that, then your kid's going to have all of these weird control issues. You're going to, I mean, you're not going to get what you want because you can't create perfection. Our brains are way too tiny to even figure that out. You might be like, oh, my God, I want to give my child a Taurus moon because I'm going to be a good mom and I'm going to give my child the best moon possible. It's like, dude, the universe knows what kind of mom you're going to be. And if you're going to give your child an Aquarius moon or something like that, that's just going to happen. And you can't control that. So that's like before having a kid. <laughs> and I did have to get induced labor. And there's also this numerology. Like I didn't want my child to be born on a four, on the four day I, or a five day. I really had like a big issue with that. And uh, my husband wouldn't let me wouldn't let me add the numbers. He kept like hitting me when they're like, okay, here, you were going to induce labor like on on a day, and I was like, why don't you pick the day, just pick the day, and they pick the day, they're like, does that work for you? And I was like, uh, and my husband's like kicking me so my, my head can't count up, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's fine, whatever, just do it, whatever, and it's amazing because when my son was born, like, how the universe just knew, like, I was in labor for like 24 hours before they finally just did a C-section, and when my kid came out, he basically had a conjuncting ascendant with my husband's, and it was weird, you know, and like my kid has Leo Moon, and I, I, at first when I was trying to like figure things out about the chart, I just wouldn't even look at my son's chart because ultimately I need to give him love and affection and show him stuff, you know, from my heart, which again, you know, the universe already knows, granted I'm taking away free will here, but there's things that I almost feel like, okay, one, my son controls me. Like, he cries, I come to him. Like, I can't even help that. And he has moon trine Pluto, which is his own ability to control his emotions in a nice trine, like, and here I am, I'm giving him that. Because, and I don't know if that's necessarily good. It's not really. He's going to have these weird control over his emotion issues because I don't let him cry. (laughs) And I see those things, and it's really strange, but... I like, can't help it. Like he's crying right now. I can hear him, and uh, he's fine. He's like absolutely fine. He's being taken care of. But I just want to like get up and go make sure he doesn't cry and like hold him and hug him. Anyway, um, but as far as I, I just try to do you know the best job I can, and I, I do look at stuff and see this is 
this is how I feel like I should raise my child. These are the things I feel are best for my child. And some of them are from astrology and some of them are just from everybody else and observing the way other parents are and seeing what I like and dislike and, you know, knowing how I was raised and what I took from that that was good. And you, and I can't even say this is an I thing because, you know, my husband comes from a completely different background and he now has to raise the child too. So you're like merging two different, completely different people and raising a child. And it's really strange, but you do have to like compromise with that person. And I don't know, it's just a weird thing. But my husband does, he agrees with astrology, he understands it. So it's not something I'm going to like put down in Remy's throat, but I will teach all this astrological stuff like, you know, like you're a Leo. You have a Leo moon because you control your mom. So well, that's fun. And then <laughs> <laughs> and go on there, you know, whatever, slowly. Maybe one day I'll write kids' books. Just kidding. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> how to teach your child. How to teach your second grader all about charts. <laughs> Best seller. Yeah. I just feel like it's weird. I don't know. I'd, it, maybe it's not weird. Maybe that's something that won't be weird later. It's weird right now. And I don't touch weird stuff right now. <laughs> One day at a time. That's actually perfect that you said that because I wanted to know um, before we close out with these last few questions, um, being that we are entering such a new age, when do you think and how so or how soon do you think, you know, being able to speak this language will be more, you know, widespread to the point where um, people in high school are talking about how their moon was trining Uranus the other day and they had to go through this. And how, how is us making videos, you know, making that a um, possibility more and more? Yeah, well, actually, that's, like, the coolest thing for me. And it just is. I love that teenagers watch my videos. And I know I swear and stuff, and maybe, like, their parents won't like that, but, I mean, whatever. Um, because that's, like, the best comments I get. I'm 16 years old, and, oh, my God, I didn't know about that I had my moon in this, my ascendant in this, my midheavens this. And, like, and I've even, like, gotten to Skype, because I do Skype consultations with some people who are, like, 18. And because no, no one younger, which I guess that would be weird. You don't like have a hundred dollars to spend on talking to me. That's like a strange thing. Um, <laughs> but um, I just like I love that they they are using it to learn about their purpose because I think that's a lot of what it is. When you're in high school, you just feel lost. You feel like a piece of crap, and that sometimes, and even it doesn't matter if you're popular or you're like not popular, or you know bullied or you're the bully. Every single kid in high school gets bullied. I don't care. Like, you just do because you walk through the halls and you are so insecure and you're surrounded by everybody else who's insecure. And with astrology, you could have the idea that, yeah, you know you are insecure and you're working through it, but you have a purpose and your soul has a purpose and you have a mission. And I think it, it might give, like, some sort of relief. And so I do think, like, just knowing how – fast these astrology channels have grown of just people talking about astrology like it's normal and not like it's so fucking high over your head you have no idea like what they're saying because they're talking about it in this weird language which doesn't make any sense I don't understand why people talk like that but I'd say in the next 10 years you have people everybody understands what astrology is because it's happening so fast and the debates will no longer be with people being like, oh, yeah, because you're going to tell me this day I was born and I'm a Libra, that means I'm this way. It's like, well, actually, you don't even have an argument because you don't know what astrology is. And everybody will be like that. And then as soon as people are like, let me read you your chart. As soon as someone reads your chart and they know how to read a chart, you cannot even go against astrology. Like, no one's been able to. I have talked to so many people and I read their chart and they're like, oh. And then they come up to me like later and they're like, so... What's my chart look like today? Like, will you read me more of it? Because everybody wants to know about themselves. And it's fucking true. So, <laughs> anyway, that's what that, I was saying. That's <laughs> a very phenomenal. I totally agree with that, too. Like, um, I, I like how these channels, um, as far as, like, the Discovery channel, there was a 
YouTube video they put up uh, as far as you know, why astrology is not a real science, and I checked it out, and um, it's it, it's really going to be ahead. I feel with this grand square energy, we are going to have a head with like the people who are strictly science and the people who are open to these new beliefs. And the thing I I found interesting about the video was the points they made were you know very general points that someone who you know, doesn't really ha have an interest in astrology could really, like, answer well. And what I mean by that is you could tell these are coming from people who aren't really – they're they're approaching it to debunk it and dismiss it and are not approaching it from a, well, maybe what if this is real? Like, maybe there's something I don't understand. And – I've never, I've yet to really hear someone who understands, like, what astrologers do, like, study the planets, really study a chart. I've yet to see someone like that really make an argument against astrology, a, a more well-rounded argument, because more often than not, you know, I talk to a lot of skeptical Virgos, and once I read their chart, like, once you read people's chart, it's like a whole new world for them. They're like, oh, wow, why is it that you know so much intimate details that, you know, can't just be, you know, cold red or, or luckily guessed about my life. So I do agree, like, in 10 years, this this may be, I feel because of all this chaos, we don't notice that this is really growing and affecting as large as it is, but, you know, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so. it really, you're exactly right, and every... It's, it's so strange. Like, every single person who tries to debunk astrology doesn't know anything about it. Like, I don't understand how it's every single person. You just watch a video, they're like, I'm going to tell you about why astrology has pseudoscience. And, you know, it's just, like, psychic ability. And, like, they just, they just say these weird things. And you're like, you don't know. You have no valid argument. I can't talk. You don't have any points. Nothing. Everything you say is invalid because you don't know what you're talking about. And they, they have certain half truths, like they'll mention things that are true, but they don't really correlate to the real argument. Like they don't, they don't have an extensive knowledge, and they frame it as if we're not really saying anything. Like it's just some horoscope we're saying. Or yeah, exactly. And like someone, I was just watching this video. This Libra. She was talking about it in a self-righteous tone. I don't remember her name. I would totally tell you to go to her channel and tell her she's a retard. <laughs> word that I shouldn't say. But yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> she, <clears throat> she was saying, "Oh yeah, because the stars that are in clusters that we see as clusters that are affecting us in clusters are actually millions of light years away, and they don't even." touch each other in any sort of way, and you're going to tell me that those affect the way that I am as a human. And that's what her argument was. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great argument. You know what I'd love for you to do now is to take that and tell me that if I read those stars to you that they don't make sense to you. Because if I read those weird things that aren't really clusters that are just far millions of light years away from each other, I can still tell you about your personality based on those. I don't care that they're not in clusters. I don't care that they're million light years away. I don't care that that shouldn't make any sense to you because I know about the way your mom treated you when you were five because of those. So and It's a sense of empowerment, too, to really be able to back up what you do. Like, watching these people talk about it is a blessing. It makes me feel really happy because, like, they teach me more about their sign, and they almost yeah. affirm everything the, from the way they say it to the way they deduce the information. It's like, wow, this is exactly to the T how a Virgo would like describe this. You're proving this for me right now. I'm like, I know. Like, like that woman I watched her. I was like, she was so hard to listen to. I'm like, because she's a Libra and she was so unbalanced. Have you ever tried to listen to an unbalanced Libra talk? They suck. Like we suck. If I get unbalanced and I make a video, you guys are gonna hate it. Like they'll be like, you are a disgusting human being, Alyssa. Like you're all over the place. <laughs> you just are saying shit to say that you don't have anything to back it up. You're just fucking crazy. And Lib unbalanced Libras are crazy. And and it's like, yeah, exactly. And this proved my point there. And I'm sorry. You just have to get back in balance. Find out the other side before you try to prove your point. Doesn't work. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> so before we finish, uh, we we'll want to know what is next for Alyssa Sharp as far as your life and your YouTube channel. And um, before you answer that, where could we reach you if we want a reading or a consultation or just to chat up with you? Well, um, I know in this video, like in the live chat, there is underneath the YouTube thing, there's AlyssaSharp.com. You go there, you can buy a reading. It's $100 for half an hour. And if you're thinking that, like, I'm crazy and I cut people off at half an hour, you're crazy because I don't. I talk to you for about a half an hour and then I answer questions and stuff. I don't cut you off. So, I mean, I know your time is valuable, so that's what is there. Um, and I'll talk to you about anything, anything you want to. <laughs> um, but I won't get naked. <laughs> Go to AlyssaSharp.com so, and just like get a reading from me, and that's the best way to reach me. You can email me. Um, and my email address is on my website, though only email me if it's something a matter of importance. Otherwise, you can get to me on my Facebook, too, just kind of writing me a comment on Facebook. Alyssa Sharp, you should be able to find that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at selling myself on the internet. I just you should just find me. She's really good. <laughs> kind of only the internet. Just find me. <laughs> and then uh, what's next for me? I am well. I just moved. I was in the process of writing a lot because I have a lot of things to write. I um, have a couple other things set up with some. TV people, this is not like saying that I'm going to go on TV because I'm nowhere near that and no one even wants me for TV, I swear. But I do have connections with certain people that are contacting me who may want to interview me for little spots and little things, which is kind of cool. Um, so that will be what it will be. I um, was going to be taken over by a website and then they decided that they wanted to buy me, like, you know, just like take control of my brand and like who I am and I didn't really like that, so apparently that's what happens when you start getting up. People want to take you before you're anything and make you theirs because they see something in you, but they don't want to pay you the price that you're worth. And so I've had to deal with a lot of that stuff recently. Um, and, yeah, so I, what I decided then is that me and my friend Penny, and definitely you too, I can talk to you about this later, but we are working on a, a website full of videos and information uh, from a bunch of different astrologers who are younger who talk like that and um, just like getting into like a central hub of just astrology so that if you needed to learn something you could go there and we could tell you what it means when your Uranus is trying your moon, stuff like that and it would be written or in a video form in a way that you can understand. So that is definitely something that we want to do by the end of the year. Um, it's hard, you know, you have a kid but we're working on that. Um, I have a Saturn series I'm about to do because I have to talk about Saturn and I don't really want to, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Saturn just sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I know I have to talk about it because I put it off for a whole year now. So talking about Saturn and I'm writing. I'm writing, and people want to know like would I write like an astrology book? I cannot write an astrology book because I do not have a brain that can write an astrology book. It just would not work putting stuff out, but I love stories, and so I'm writing a story, and I have like 11,000 words, and I need 80,000, so that was an update on that, and when that comes out, hopefully it doesn't suck, but <laughs> that's like a big piece of what I'm working on right now, because I really feel like I want to get words out there and tell a story about astrology, where after you've read the whole thing, you're like, I know a lot about astrology, and I didn't feel like I was learning. Is that weird? That's like what I want to do. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so, so that's a lot of stuff. Just gave you that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is like the exclusive sneak peek stuff right here. We got privy to. I know. I feel good that I just got it off my chest. <laughs> oh, I've been holding all that in. <laughs> well, thank God for peace talk. You yeah, know. Thank you. <laughs> Get it all out there. So. Thank you once again, Alyssa. I really appreciate you. This was a very awesome first episode. I feel blessed right now. Oh, thank you. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Join us next week, Thursday or Friday. I'm going to have Carolyn Mayberry and talk about astrology some more. That's awesome. So, peace.
Peace out. <laughs> Bye.